What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. I know I've been saying this every day, but uh, we have a lot of information to go over today. We've had a very action-packed week, uh, especially yesterday with all the Tesla news and then Powell with the day before, and just the market's kind of going crazy. So uh, the NASDAQ uh, fell the most out of the three major indexes today, falling about 3%. Uh, the S&P 500 fell about 2.3%. And then the Dow fell about 2%, which is about 500 points. So uh, there's a lot to go over in today's video. A lot of information with Tesla. Um, yeah, a lot of information with Tesla and some interesting information regarding uh, a brokerage and then also some news with the vaccine. And then at the end of the video, we have a $3.6 million option uh, with Apple stock. So uh, there's a lot that we're going over in this video. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to hear all the news and all the plays for this week. And thank you guys so much for all the comments and likes from the previous episode. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and if you guys aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. You see our daily videos on our YouTube homepage every single day. But let's get right into it. So Tom, what major news happened in the market today? Yeah, Tesla is really continuing to get killed. I mean, we really feel for all the traders who held Tesla calls going into that event yesterday. It's really no surprise. I'm sure everybody trading the markets knows that Tesla was down today. They're down under 400 a share, trading at around 375 right now in after hours. And it's just pretty crazy to see. I'm sure a lot of traders got humbled on this play. And, you know, this is really what happens whenever you have, you know, these really anticipated plays. But um, stuff even more interesting than the event Tesla had yesterday, CNBC reports that Tesla is actually going to be suing the U.S. government and U.S. trade representative Robert Lighthizer over the Trump administration's tariffs on items Tesla imports from China. And this is really interesting. Um, the electric car maker wants the court to declare two batches of Trump administration tariffs to be void and refund Tesla the tariffs it paid with interest, according to the lawsuit filed in the U.S. Court of International Trade. And this is really interesting. And honestly, I mean, I think it's a pretty smart move by Tesla as long as they, um, you know, actually win this case. And really, I'm not sure Tesla would have taken this, um, you know, without consulting with major attorneys and, you know, the attorneys telling them, you know, I think you actually might have a chance to win this. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about Tesla a lot this week, especially before the event. You know, we were saying, be careful trading anything into the event. But now, uh, well, first of all, Tesla started to fall yesterday after market hours um, because of the overhyped battery day event. But uh, it, it's still falling. It's still falling, continuing that downwards momentum. But this news, uh, I think this also is playing a role into the downwards movement. So, it's interesting news, and the main thing to take away from it is Tesla's falling a lot right now, and as of right now, it looks like it's going to continue. Yeah, and it's really interesting to me because they did this the day right after that event, and it's almost like they tried to foreshadow this with the event so that you know everybody would um, have their eyes on the event and then not really see this type of news come through. And you know, I'm, I'm not saying that that's what they were doing, but it just seems interesting that they would do that the day after that event. True. True. Uh, what other major news happened today? Yeah, so CNBC reports the Interactive Brokers is bracing for election volatility by telling clients to put up more cash. Interactive Brokers is really known for having low margin requirements and will be increasing the, re the requirements they have to get margin. And this is really interesting with the market down and the elections looming. I mean, we've been forecasting a market drop before the elections for a while now. And I think that the stimulus bill holdup the new spending bill to avoid a government shutdown, the election, and the over-recovery of tech stocks have really put the market right now in a tough place. And it's really kind of interesting that Interactive Brokers is going to be upping their requirements for margin. I mean, that's really interesting. And I just, I, I didn't expect to see that out of any brokers going into the election, but um, really they must be seeing a lot of volatility. I think that that should really tell you a lot, you know, going into the elections right now and with the market dropping, it's just really interesting to see a big brokerage like this upping those requirements. I think this is probably the most important news article of the day. You know, you see, you see a huge brokerage, uh, interactive brokers is upping their margin requirements, right? So what does that tell you? 
it tells you that you know this huge brokerage with a ton of data and a ton of clients, uh, they're expecting a lot of volatility in the market. So, you know, you, you have to you have to understand that you know you might think that the market is a little crazy right now because of uh, the major events this week and, and tech stocks are so high, but a giant brokerage like Interactive Brokers is expecting this volatility until the election. So I think that tells us a lot about what we might be seeing out of the markets until the election happens. You know, if interactive brokers with all of their clients and all of their data, um, if they're expecting volatility, there, there's probably a good shot that uh, the market is going to stay like this for a little bit now. So I think that's very interesting to note. Yeah, I think it, for a lot of people who are in those um, pretty risky growth stocks right now, I think it might be a good, you know, I'm not saying to, to do this by any, you know, stretch the imagination, put your own due diligence into this. But, you know, if it was me, I, I would be taking that a lot of money out of those plays right now and personally waiting until the market fell a little bit and then getting into, you know, some of these tech stocks pretty low. Yeah, so you're saying for like a long-term hold? Yeah, yeah, for, for long-term plays right now. Gotcha, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a lot of volatility heading into the election and right now it's looking like um we're, we're going to see a lot not a lot but looks like we're going to see some more downside uh, potential going into the, the election which in my opinion is good for traders because uh, obviously uh, taking advantage of stocks falling with puts but uh, if the market does continue to fall it also gives long-term investors um, another opportunity that they may have missed in march uh, to get in some great companies at great prices. So a lot of things ahead of us for the rest of 2020. Uh, what else happened in the market today? There was actually some good news that came out of today. And Dr. Fauci reported to Congress that there will be enough vaccinations for all Americans by April of next year. And th that's really good to hear. I know that, you know, a lot of people said that we would have the, uh, the, the vaccinations by the end of this year, but that that's great news that they'll have them by April. And I really think that that'll help you know, really get the economy reopened again. And once they have those vaccinations out, I mean, there's really no more excuse for them having to shut anything down anymore. And I think that that, that would really help. And just keep in mind that that would be after the election also. True. Yeah. Awesome. So now with our Discord member of the day, and today's Discord member of the day is The Wiz. So uh, he made a great post in the Discord today uh, talking about he's been on a win streak lately. Uh, just by, you know, playing options, and he gave us a little shout-out. So, a uh, huge shout-out to The Wiz uh, for, one, making uh, some great plays, but also uh, helping other members in the group. So, thank you for that. And now let's get into the momentum plays for tomorrow. And the first one is NKLA. So, this stock is down about 26% today. Uh, had a horrible day in the market. And there's a lot of fraud and shady things going around with this company right now. And uh, you can definitely you can definitely tell uh, by just looking at their stock. So uh, we are eyeing NKLA to the downside. Tom, what levels should we be watching? Yeah, make it break below twenty dollars and fifty cents. All right, and if it breaks below that, uh, we were we will like it for puts or shorting the stock. But the next stock we have AAL, which is American Airlines. Yeah, make them pop below eleven seventy five. All right, again to the downside, and then last but not least, we have Disney, which is DIS. Disney, make them come below one twenty two seventy five. Awesome. So all these plays are to the downside. The market had a pretty bad day today, so. Uh, you know, if that continues tomorrow, uh, these can definitely be solid plays for just quick in and out little day trades. So now for the $3.6 million Apple trade um, for tomorrow, we are looking at the Apple 110 strike put options that expire on October 16th. So uh, we look at Apple. Apple had a pretty bad day today, down a little over 4%. Uh, it's coming close at a hundred dollar level. And, you know, we can see that uh, the big money behind this trade, uh, they bought the put options that are actually in the money. So I think that's a pretty, pretty big sign. And then also they have some time on them. So uh, I think this is very interesting. It shows uh, it's obviously pretty bearish. And I think that they are definitely longing these puts, meaning that they want Apple to fall. What are you seeing? 
Yeah, and Apple's sitting right on that trend line on my chart at the end of the day today. It looks like it has a lot of momentum to the downside. And obviously with the whole market coming down, I could see a lot of these stocks popping lower tomorrow. And really, um, I really liked how they fell, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago or last week. And then we kind of recovered, um, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and then now today is Wednesday. And we finally are coming back down. And it's just one of those nice plays where you see a lot of red and then, you know, a couple green days. And then, and then you see, um, you know, more red come into play. And I really like this type of setup on stocks. And, you know, it just makes for a great trading atmosphere. And I really think that Apple could come below. And I really think that they are um, obviously longing these for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the, the overall market is not looking too good right now. And like we talked about a little earlier in the episode, I'm kind of seeing this volatility to continue until the election. You know, I mean, if interactive brokers, you know, they, they have more data than we can possibly imagine. And if they're changing like a fundamental, um, like, you know, like obviously margin rates are very important to them, right? And if they're requiring their clients to uh, have more collateral, if they're increasing those requirements, uh, they're protecting themselves and they're doing it for a reason. So I think that's a, just like a, a little sign that, you know, just to be careful of what's going on. So now for our comments from the previous episode, and we had Sosa saying, not worried about Tesla whatsoever. We'll probably hit $380 tomorrow and rise back up. Tesla for life. So he was right on the money with that comment. I mean, Tesla closed at $380 and 36 cents. So uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Tesla definitely did not have a good day today. Um, but I think with the whole battery day event, I think all their technology was great, but I just think the event was overhyped. And especially with the market uh, right now falling overall, that's why Tesla's falling. But I think the, the event was just a little bit too overhyped and, and that's why the stock fell. And with the next comment, we have Day saying, do you guys think Polaris is due for a run-up? So uh, P-I-I -I is the symbol, Tom. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of looked like it was trying to run up over the past couple of days with the rest of the market. But, I mean, today it just got killed. I mean, the, the whole market just seems like it, it would have brought this down with it. I mean, I really like the setup on a, on a daily chart for the long term. I mean, it, it looks like they've been going – kind of down over the long term and they were kind kind of trying to come back up after the virus and I, I like how they how they recovered nicely but now it's just kind of looking like they might actually be bearish in my opinion and you know given their movement over the past couple of weeks I'm honestly bearish on this just kind of like I am with uh, SPY in the market overall. Awesome and then we have Alex saying what do you guys think of BLL so what do you think about BLL um, one for a short-term trade, but also for like a medium-term trade. And this is just on a technical level. So what do you see? Yeah, for a technical level, for a medium-term trade, I think that they are up a little too high right now. And it looks like they're going to start falling back. Um, you know, if I was going to look at a support level for them to fall down to, I would look for somewhere around $77 or $76. I think that would be a pretty good price point for them to fall down to, and it would be pretty safe to play some short term puts with that. But for the for a for a medium term trade, I would honestly, um, you know, really, I would still be bearish on it. But um, I'm not sure that I would, I would get a put on this and then hold it, you know, for for a month or two, I would honestly look at this for more of a shorter term thing. If I was gonna swing this, I would swing it maybe for a week or two max. Awesome. And then we have uh, Khan saying, can you guys look into INTC, which is Intel, and he says that he reads our morning day trades on the Discord as a ritual. So thank you for that. Tom had a great day trade today uh, on the Discord. So we'll get into that in a second. But what do you think of uh, Intel? Yeah, Intel, I really like it for the long term. But in the short term, it's kind of looking pretty bearish right now. It's holding the support right now around, you know, $49, $48 around. But I, I have a feeling it's going to break that to the downside. You know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm holding some shares of this long-term myself. And, you know, I, th I think there's a lot of opportunity for Intel in the long-term, but it just looks like right now that, that it's going to, you know, follow the market and potentially be bearish also. Yep. And then, uh, so touching on his comment with Discord and the day trades, um, Tom and I post just a little uh, pre-market watch list that we eye out for day trades. 
every single morning in the Discord. So it's the first link in the description down below. It's completely free. Uh, Tom and I just post normally two to three stocks that uh, we are eyeing for the morning. Um, Tom had a great trade today with PTON to the upside. Uh, so that was great. So if you guys want to join, uh, like I said, it's completely free. And we have about 10,000 people in the Discord uh, just talking stocks. Uh, you know, we talk stocks, options, and finance all day, every day. And it's completely free. So if you guys want to join, you can click the first link in the description down below. But with that being said, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or anything you are watching for the market for tomorrow? Yeah, I think I talked about this in yesterday's video also, but gold is just still looking like it's in a great setup right now. Um, it obviously fell a lot today with the market, and that was awesome to see. Gold doesn't usually fall with the market, but lately it's actually been you know, following the SPY and the Dow and the NASDAQ, which is pretty crazy to see if, if you want me to be honest with you. And to be honest, it just looks like it could really fall based on how much it's went up over the past year. And I think the GLD could continue down tomorrow if the market continues down. And GLD is a very volatile option and they're normally pretty well priced. So, you know, a lot of um, um, moderate traders or, or beginner traders could get into this for, for pretty reasonable prices, I think. Yeah, so GLD touching on its um, relationship with the indexes, uh, historically gold goes up when investors are scared and uh, they, they take their money out of the stock market and they put it in gold. Uh, more for capital preservation rather than growth that they would see in the stock market. However, we've been seeing it rise with the market lately. A lot of that is due to uh, increased inflation. So uh, that's kind of what we're seeing there. There's a couple other factors, but uh, the main thing is inflation. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And now to end the video. So a huge shout out to everyone who watched this video. Uh, Tom and I are so grateful for all of the comments in the comment section down below. Uh, all the comments really help us. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the comments, the likes, and the new subscribers. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe to see our daily videos on our YouTube homepage every single day. Uh, we're sitting just under 30,000 subscribers. So uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see these daily videos every single day. And if you guys want to try out the new options day trading bot, you can click the first or no, you can click the stocked up options alerts link in the description down below. If you want to join the free discord, you can click the first link in the description down below. If you guys have any comments, let us know in the comments down below. Other than that, thanks for watching.